when you're at the top, there's always going to be someone or something trying to take your spot, trying to replace you, and uh, Kovacs has been king for a long time, but Aim Beast, they're coming for him. Angels, what is going on? The Champ Strider here. And in today's video, we're going to be checking out Aim Beast, which was actually recommended to me by Just Get Us, a good buddy of mine and a really good aimer. So I'm going to take a look at the program, give you guys kind of an overview of it, my impressions. And uh, most importantly, because I know this is probably the question I'm going to get asked most, is, well, how does it compare to Kovacs? Is it better than Kovacs? Should I be moving from Kovacs to Aim Beast? So before I actually hop in the program and give you guys any of my uh, my impressions or an overview, let me just get this out of the way by saying Aim Beast, it's just a great, great program. Like you could put Aim Beast up against any, any program on the market, including Kovacs, and it will rival it. It's that good. And if you're on a budget for a paid program, it's actually a few dollars cheaper than uh, than Kovacs. It's only $5.99. So as I said, if you're on a budget, it is a valid option for you to get. And you could do all of the possible aim training you can think of inside Aim Beast. So look, we're right here at the main screen. And the first thing I want to point out, because this is going to be a common theme I'm going to say, is look how clean the user interface and everything is about this. You can tell a lot of love was put into the presentation of this product. So now if we hit over on the options... I just want to, again, look as we go through here a little bit, look at how much customization is in this. If we have our crosshair scale, there's a bunch of different uh, bunch of different options. But what's really impressive about the customization is look at look at this color slider right here. I mean, this is like an RGB, like uh, like a Photoshop or like dream or something. There are so many different color options. You can change the uh, the brightness and contrast of them here. Any color you could imagine is up here. There's a ton of customization. And this is a common theme if you click through to uh, the other tabs. And if you look here, we have like all our, our wall colors, our floor colors, our roof colors, our enemy colors. Everything is super customizable. Um, and that's as far as color, brightness, contrast. And look, as I click on this, look how many different wall and floor textures are in the game. There's a ton and they all look pretty gorgeous. So there's a lot you can do to make the game look how you want it to look. Now, that being said, at the end of the day with an aim trainer, like all we really want is for the targets to pop off the walls and floor, right? So uh, it might be a little overkill, but it's pretty cool. Now, another cool feature in the options, because I talked about how customizable this game was, it's really, really cool feature, but it's buried. And I don't think anyone would know it's there unless you did some real deep diving is down here. There's a uh, sensitivity randomizer. So if you're one of those people who's a little bit more advanced in your training and you want to improve your mass control as much as possible, this is a good way to throw a loop in your training because you can go from, you know, working on your wrist control at that high sensitivity to then it might throw you on a super slow sense where you're working on your arm speed. So it's a really, really cool feature to throw some variety in your training. And just again, talking about the excessive and ridiculous amount of customization in this game, if you go on the sound tab, you can even change the, the pitch of all your sounds, like your, your weapon or your hit marker. It's pretty crazy that all this is included inside an aim trainer. So now let's hit the play button and get over to the, uh, the main tab. And this is where we're going to be doing probably most of our training. And I want to point out again how clean everything is and it's pretty easy to navigate. So look, over here you have all these little check marks for how hard your drill wants to be. So if it's one of your first times on Aim Beast, we just sorted all of our drills by easy and medium. So you can find some, some drills that are, uh, you know, to your skill level. And if you want to be even more specific, there's a tab right here. If you just want to work on your click timing, boom. Now we've sorted everything by click timing so you can train and target that skill specifically. So I was saving the comparisons, but real quick, this is a lot easier to find stuff than in Kovacs where it's just a mass list of thousands of thousands of drills, right? So this is kind of nice because you can at least sort it by how hard it is and, and what type of area you're going to be training. Now there is a ranked list and it's a little bit of a grind to get to. And I, I just want to touch on this because uh, when I first got the uh, Aim Beast, it was at like a, a week left in their first season. And uh, I think I played through everything once or twice. And I was going to wait for the next season to start to dive into it again. And the next season started and it was the exact same drills, which was a little disappointing to me. So I've mostly just played around in the normal tab because I just found more drills that I liked or were more fun to more fun to play. But there is a ranked list and uh, I want to touch on there's not that many participants in it. This is going to be a common theme, too, but the community is a lot smaller than uh, than Kovacs. Like I'm ranked 470 something on this as of this moment. 
And, you know, usually I have similar rankings in Kovacs where, uh, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of people. So this is like a much more uh, sweaty crew of aimers. Like if I scroll down the, uh, the list of people playing this from Aiming Pro or Kovacs, I know a lot of the names and it seems like all the uh, the people who are really into aim training have purchased this. So it's quite a bit harder to climb up the leaderboards. So what I'm getting at is there's a much smaller casual player base in this game than there is in Kovacs. So now we'll hop into game and I'll, I'll just have some footage of some different exercises going as I talk. And uh, I just want to say that when you get into the game, everything here, it feels amazing. And if you've ever played a crappy aim trainer, like uh, what? 3D Aim Trainer or Steel Series has probably the crappiest aiming trainer I've ever seen, but they're kind of like filled with input lag and they're stuttering. And just generally, the mouse control feels like shit. And uh, Aim Beast, it feels amazing. Like everything feels super responsive and snappy. Like the program, it just runs amazing. And uh, I'm very, very impressed by how it feels when you're actually doing the exercises. And there's actually a really great variety of exercises in Aim Beast. And uh, most of the classic Aim Trainer or the classic Kovac drills, they've been ported over to Aim Beast. So while most any type of scenario you could want is in Aim Beast, it's still a game with a very like small community. So it can be a bit harder to find certain exercises or resources. And uh, this is where a program like Kovac shines and that has a very, very active community. Like if you need a recommendation for an exercise or a routine, you can hop in the Kovacs Discord or on the subreddit, and in two minutes, someone's going to give you some answers or some recommendations. And uh, AimBeast doesn't have an active community like that. Like their subreddit and their Discord are, are pretty slow. So if you're starting out, you're basically kind of on your own figuring out what to do in AimBeast. So it can be a bit overwhelming, and you can't just really type in in YouTube or Google like AimBeast uh, AimBeast routines and get a ton a ton of different resources. Like the resources just aren't there. And now the flip side of that argument is uh, I've watched tons of YouTube videos on Kovacs routines and there is a ton of just complete crap that you have to sift through to find some decent Kovacs routines. But I guess it's still better to, to sift through some crap than to have nothing to sift through. And now I said earlier that I would recommend Aim Beast, like no questions asked, but where things start to get interesting is, well, well, is Aim Beast an upgrade over Kovacs? Or if you have Kovacs, should you get Aim Beast or switch to Aim Beast? And this question is more difficult to answer because Aim Beast, it was created as like a direct rival to Kovacs. And to me, it suffers a bit from like the World of Warcraft clone syndrome in, in MMO games. And let me kind of explain this a bit. So when WoW was just like totally going crazy and it was the first like mainstream MMO game and uh, for the next decade and even actually now today, MMO developers, they went the route of trying to clone World of Warcraft and just make it better or add their own twists to it. And what ended up happening with games like Star Wars The Old Republic or Wild Stars, even though they might have improved some aspects of WoW, uh, the MMO community, they stuck with what they know and where the large community was. And this reminds me of Aim Beast because Aim Beast, it took a lot of what Kovacs does and improved on it. Like you can't deny that the UI is like, it's just cleaner and sexier than Kovacs and the customization, it's just on another level. But is this really enough to move a community from Kovacs to Aim Beast? And in my opinion, no, it's not. And the problem for Aim Beast is once they released with their like, you know, super sexy UI and all the customization, they kind of they played their cards and uh and Kovacs countered not soon after with an upgraded UI and tons of new playlists, strafing scenarios, robots. And while the Kovacs UI it still doesn't look as nice as Aim Beast, uh it's an aim trainer, and I don't think that many people care that much. And uh, I feel like Kovacs has the community and the money to just like outpace Aim Beast in production from here on out. And you see this in AAA games too, like when uh, when Apex came out with the uh, the ping system and the revive system. Fortnite within a week had that in their game, so I, I think Kovacs will outpace them as we go forward here. And now Aim does have some features coming in the future with like a dual mode and uh, community playlist. But to me, I'm uh, very cautiously optimistic about the dual mode because with how small the community is, I have the feeling that within a month, the dual mode will be dead and you'll just be you know, endlessly searching for game. 
So to me, I'm still thinking that Kovacs is very much still the king. And uh, if you're a Kovacs user, I don't think you need to get Aim Beast. Like, it really won't change anything about your training. Like, it can be a fun change of scenery. And for $5, like, I'm kind of the, the feeling, like, why not? Like, I enjoyed the program. And I'm still going to use it here and there. And, like, I just feel like I continually say this, but it's a great program. I really like it. But uh, I don't think there's any need to get this if you already own Kovacs. All right, Angels, that's going to be it for me. Let me know in the comments before you go if there's any other AIM trainers you want me to check out and kind of give a, a review or some impressions of. And if it's your first time here, become an Angel by subscribing. I release FPS content every single week, and you don't want to miss it. Champ out.